if you recall we did very briefly talk about soundx in chapter 2 the soundx algorithm allows you to find all documents which contain terms that phonetically match the query right what do i mean by phonetically matching the query if if i if i pronounce my query then the query terms that sound like that particular pronunciation will be present in the documents the exact terms need not be present but terms sounding like them will be present so we are going to look at so, uh, the soundx algorithm that we saw in the previous class so we are going to look at the soundx algorithm and uh, just to tell you very briefly about the history of soundx it actually predates the invention of the computer so what happened was uh, in the uh, early 1900s when there was a lot of migration into the us from uh, you know all kinds of countries uh, people wanted a way to keep track of names of the immigrants right because the names would be spelled in a very different way in russian uh, as compared to uh, say in american english so people wanted to keep track of the fact for example that shebi chef is spelled in one way in uh, one country and it could be spelled in a very different way in a uh, in another country now in terms of information retrieval if the query is shebi chef with this kind of a spelling we want documents containing other ways of writing the query as well right and again it's going to be language specific and soundex is mainly used for proper nouns it's mainly used for names of people because names are what get spelled differently in different countries and as you can guess what the soundex algorithm does is it, it it groups together terms that sound similar when pronounced into the same equivalence class so during the linguistic preprocessing phase there will be a soundex module which will take every token that needs to be indexed and map it or transform it into a four character term okay and this is going to be the equivalence class and again we're going to do the same thing for the terms in the uh, for, for the words in the document and for words in the query and then the terms that actually form the dictionary of the inverted index will be these four character standard forms of the tokens so let me uh, give you an example of how a typical soundex algorithm works there are actually many variants of this soundex algorithm so uh, this is just uh, one simple version of the algorithm so here's the heuristic you'll take the first letter of the word let me actually also work with an example so let's take a token like herman which is the name of a person h e r m a n what we will do is we will retain the first letter of the word so h will remain as it is then we will change all occurrences of the following letters into a zero okay so all the vowels for example a e i o u and all other words h w and y which sound like vowels when they appear in in words all these will get mapped to the same letter zero and the reason for that is that vowels can get pronounced in different ways in different places but because they could be you know they they are approximately the same we'll map them to the same code so we'll take this e will map it to a zero this r will remain the same m will remain the same this will be so this is a zero this is a zero and this is n then we'll change the letters into digits as follows again these letters are grouped together based on similar pronunciation somebody can pr be pronouncing b but it may sound like a p 
right? Or a fur, or a ver. That's why all four of them get mapped to the same digit. So B F P V get maps gets mapped to a one. C G J K and so on. All these letters get mapped to a two. These get mapped to a three and so on. R gets mapped to a six. So because we have an R here, we'll have H O six. And what about M and N? M and N both get mapped to a five. So we'll have a five here followed by a zero followed by a five. Right, so what we are doing is we are collapsing together different letters and mapping them to the same digit if they sound similar in pronunciation or if they can be mistaken for other letters in the same set. Then we will remove all pairs of consecutive digits. Okay, because consecutive digits will be two consonants that sound similar. Okay. So remove all pairs of consecutive digits. We don't have any consecutive digits here. So we'll let it remain as it is. And then we'll remove all the zeros from the resulting string. So these these two zeros will go and we'll get H655. And that's it. If the resulting string is more than four positions long, we'll truncate it to four positions. And if it's less than four positions long, we'll pad the resulting string with trailing zeros. Okay, so because we had exactly four letters, the sound X representation of Herman will be H655. Now you can see that the term, so this is going to be the term that will be indexed. Okay, we're not going to be indexing this. We'll be indexing this. Now what about the term Herman with a double N? Where will it get mapped to in the sound X representation? Well, we'll follow the same steps. There'll be an extra N over here. So we'll have an extra five over here. Right, so at the end of step three, this is what we have. In step four, <clears throat> when we remove all pairs of consecutive digits, this five five will get changed into a single five. Okay. So this will become H zero six five zero five. Okay. So we've removed all pairs of consecutive digits. Now we'll remove all the zeros. So when we remove the zeros, these two zeros will get H six five five. So again we've got the same representation as this word, right? So documents containing either of these two terms will get mapped to the same uh, postings list. So you can see that if we apply this SoundX module, we will be able to retrieve documents containing terms with the same SoundX code as the terms in the query. Now SoundX is a very standard algorithm which is provided by uh, not just by IR systems but also by databases like Oracle. I was just looking at an example before we started this class. So here is a SQL query for example. Um, so you have this relation hr.employees and if, if you select, so you have a relation here, a table of employee records and you want to you, you want to extract out the last name and the first name from this relation you want to extract out the last name and first name of all employees from this relation where the soundex representation of the last name of the employee is the same as the soundex representation of the string smith okay and you can see that if you look at the result of this query, you can see that the entries here, Lindsay Smith and William Smith have a last name that is spelled as S-M-I-T-H. Now spelling is different, but the SoundX representation is the same. And that is why uh, this SoundX module is going to map them. It's going to treat uh, these last names 
as satisfying this query. So whether you look at Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server and so on, even database systems provide uh, Soundex as an, as an option. Now it turns out that Soundex is not that useful for information retrieval because it lowers the precision. Okay, because there are only, I mean, lots of different names will get on, and lots of different terms. Note that we are talking about names here. But in the context of the web, you just don't have names. You have all kinds of words, right? And if, if many of them get mapped to the same Soundex uh, code, that's not very meaningful. So Soundex is not good when you want high precision as in the context of the web. But it's okay for applications where recall is very important. Okay. So for example, Interpol may be interested in keeping track of names of people because you know they want to keep track of suspected terrorists. And so they could you know use something like Soundex to keep track of variants of names that get pronounced in the same way. And in general, the, the algorithm is tailored to work well for European names. And uh, you know there's this paper by Zobel and Dart which shows that, other phonetic algorithms uh, perform much better than the, than the Soundex algorithm in the context of information retrieval. So Soundex doesn't work very well in the context of information retrieval. There are other phonetic algorithms whose principles are similar which do work well. 